Glowing magma deep underground, houses collapsing and people fleeing their apartments in panic. No, we are not talking about the next Hollywood disaster movie, but about what is currently happening in Italy. A few days ago, an earthquake with a magnitude of 4.4 shook the area. The Phlegraean Fields, the supervolcano near Naples, Maybe you saw it on the news a few days ago. On Wednesday night, the earth shook in the Campi Flegre with a magnitude of 4.4. That might not sound like much to some of you, but when the epicenter is only 2.5 kilometers below the surface, even an earthquake of this magnitude can cause significant damage. The residents around Naples have felt that too. Here you can see original footage. In Bagnoli, an attic collapsed, a woman was injured and had to be rescued by the fire department. In addition, parts of the facade and roof tiles fell on the streets and demolished vehicles. What particularly worries me about the whole situation is not just this single quake, but the long-term trend. The Campi Fligre are an enormous volcanic caldera, a large bowl-shaped crater that was formed by the collapse of a magma chamber. The last really big eruption occurred about 40,000 years ago and was one of the strongest volcanic eruptions eruptions in the history of Europe. Since then, the volcano has never been completely quiet. But what we are currently observing is still concerning. Since 2006, the ground in the region has been rising and the rate of uplift has significantly increased in recent weeks. By the way, I regularly report on the situation at Campi Flegre. By the way, I regularly report on the situation at the Campi Flegre. If you don't want to miss anything in the future, please leave a subscription for the channel. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe. You will never miss a video again and you will help me immensely. Thank you guys. Currently, there are more and more frequent earthquakes. The most recent quake, together with an equally strong tremor in May 2024, was the most violent in four decades. Even in the well-known uplift phase from 1982 to 1984, there were no such strong tremors. At that time, the strongest quake only reached a magnitude of 4.2. Here you see another original recording from the night of the current eruption. What do the experts have to say about it? Italian volcanologist Giuseppe Di Natale recently shared some very interesting insights in an interview. He says, today we are over 40 centimeters higher in terms of absolute ground uplift compared to 1984. Therefore, we have higher seismic activity than back then, even though the uplift rate is much lower than it was then. But what causes this ground uplift in the first place? To answer that, we have to take a look below the surface. Deep below the Campi Flegre, at a depth of about 8 kilometers, there is probably a magmatic reservoir. Gases are constantly rising from there, increasing the pressure underground. De Natal describes the current situation as follows. The speed of the ground uplift has often varied during this Brady seismic phase that began in 1867-2006. The values of the last few weeks are among the highest observed, but they are still significantly lower than the speed observed from 1983 to 1984. Bradycism, there we have an important technical term. It refers to the slow rising and sinking of the ground in volcanic regions. In the case of the Campi Flegre, this phenomenon is particularly pronounced. In the current phase, which has now been ongoing for almost 20 years, the ground has risen a total of 142 centimeters. What's interesting is that previous uplift phases were generally much shorter, lasting only two to three years. So the current phase is exceptionally lengthy, and what I find particularly interesting is that during previous uplift phases in the 50s, or more 70s and 80s, the rate of uplift was higher, but the total uplift was less. The current phase is characterized by a longer duration and a greater overall uplift. Incidentally, the speed of the uplift has tripled in recent weeks, from about 1 cm per month to about 3 cm. Of course, this has put local residents on high alert, and that is understandable because the buildings in the region are increasingly suffering from the constant tremors. The building fabric is becoming weaker with each quake. This also explains why the latest quake, with a magnitude of 4.4, was able to cause relatively extensive damage. Normally, one would expect only minor damage from an earthquake of this magnitude, but the buildings in Portilolio and the surrounding area have already been weakened by years of seismic activity. So what can we expect for the coming months? Natali is quite clear about that. We have to expect a further increase in seismic activity because the speed of ground uplift has increased significantly. Of course, this will only continue if the uplift does not slow or even stop in the near future. He compares the current situation to the major crisis of the early 80s, but the current situation is more intense in many ways. 
He says, the current crisis is very similar to the one in the 80s, but intensified. The earthquakes are more frequent and stronger, the ground is over 40 centimeters higher, the changes in gas emissions, especially carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide, are much greater than they were then, and the duration is much longer than it was then. In view of this development, the authorities have already taken measures. After the latest quake, schools were closed and emergency centers set up. The civil defense has set up tents at assembly points from which people could be evacuated in an emergency. Some citizens are even calling for the alert level to be raised from yellow to orange, which would already mean initial evacuation measures. But here comes the big question. How high is the risk of an actual eruption? That's hard to answer even for experts. What we do know is that increased seismic activity and ground uplift are classic signs of heightened volcanic activity. The magma is rising and exerting pressure on the rock layers above it. The Italian authorities currently rate the risk as increased, but do not consider an eruption to be imminent. The alert status remains at yellow for the time being, which means that the volcano is more active than normal, but that immediate evacuation is not necessary. However, there are indeed scientists who advocate for raising the alert level in light of recent developments. One thing I want to mention is the long-term forecast for the region. Natali and other experts are not very optimistic about that. They expect seismic activity to continue to increase and that buildings in the region will be increasingly affected. In the long term, it could even come to the point where cities like Pozzuoli have to be abandoned, not necessarily because of a gigantic eruption, but because the constant earthquakes will continue to damage the buildings. A truly catastrophic eruption of the Campi Flegrei could indeed have an impact on the global climate. But such a magnitude 7 or 8 eruption on the volcanic explosivity index is very rare. It only happens every few 10,000 or 100,000 years. A moderate eruption is more likely, which would mainly have local effects. But even such a small eruption would be a disaster for the densely populated region around Naples with its millions of residents. Of course, it would be a disaster. That is why it is so important that monitoring of the volcano is intensified and evacuation plans are regularly updated. And as if that wasn't worrying enough, there was another quake in Italy last Friday. A magnitude 4.8 earthquake hit the region around Foggia in southern Italy. The epicenter was just off the Adriatic coast, only 12 kilometers from San Nicandro Garganico at a depth of 9 kilometers. Despite the noticeable tremor, no major damage has been reported so far, but as a precaution, train connections between Bari and Pescara have been interrupted. This naturally raises the question of whether there could be a connection to the Campi Flegre. However, that is very unlikely because the earthquake is more likely due to the complex tectonic structure of the region, particularly the Gondola Fault, a sinistral strike-slip fault that runs through the Gargano Peninsula. Simply put, the Adriatic microplate is pushing against the Eurasian continental plate here, creating tension. So it's just a coincidence that this earthquake occurred right after the one in Pozzuoli. You can definitely expect that in the coming weeks and months. So expect that I will keep you updated on further developments in the Campi Flegre. And if you want to learn even more about the mysteries of the cosmos, then I have something for you. At the CERN Particle Accelerator, something absolutely incredible has just been discovered in a crazy experiment and it has something to do with antimatter and could completely turn our understanding of the beginning of the cosmos upside down. Click on the video in the top right corner to learn all about this crazy antimatter experiment. It's very exciting. And if you click in the bottom right corner, you'll find, as always, another exciting topic related to science and space. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.